Personal Finance Excel Practice Problem Estimated Monthly Cost Purchase of Condominium Prepare to get financially fit by practicing personal finance. Here we are in our Excel worksheet. If you don't have access to the Excel worksheet, that's okay because we're basically building this from a blank sheet here. If you do have access to the worksheet, there's three tabs down below, example tab, practice tab, and a blank tab. The example tab in essence being an answer key. Let's take a look at it now. We've got the information related to the purchase of a condominium on the left-hand side. We're gonna be populating the estimated monthly costs and then take a look and build the amortization table and then build a summary table with formulas and with the use of a pivot table. On the second tab, the practice tab, we have some of the cells that are pre-formatted. So if you don't want to spend as much time formatting the cells, you can use this worksheet where the cells are already formatted. And then if we go to the tab to the right, this is where we will be working in the blank tab. Now, if you're just working on a blank sheet, you might want to repopulate this information. What I would suggest to do is select the whole sheet first, format the sheet, and then use specialized formatting for these cells as needed. For example, the percent and so on. The format that I use, if I was going to select the whole sheet, is I right click, format the cells. I usually go to uh, the currency is what I'm usually on and then the bracketed numbers, I remove the dollar sign, and that's basically gonna be our starting point for the, the most part. And then I'll make any adjustments we need to be making by adding uh, percentages when necessary or adding decibels when necessary. So our information on the left-hand side, purchase a condominium, the mortgage is gonna be 250,000 years 25, the rate is 8%. Property tax per year is going to be the 2,200. Property insurance per year, 600. And the association fee uh, for the condominium is going to be $300. We're focused in on what we think the monthly expenses related to the purchase will be. We'll have more comprehensive problems later on in the section. So I'm going to start off with a header, which I'm going to call uh, monthly housing payments monthly housing payments. If I misspell anything, I apologize. I'll go to the spell check at some point in time. I'm going to make this cell a little bit wider. Note that I might not need to go all the way past uh, here, meaning I might have some overlap and be okay with that. I'm going to imagine that I'm going to be using these two cells in my calculation uh, down below. So I'll widen that cell if I need to, but just as a general rule, I'm going to say, okay, that looks pretty good to start out with. I'm going to highlight from here from D to F. I'm going to make this a header, which I usually do by going to the home tab font. I go to my bucket. I'm going to make it black and then the text white so that the, the headers will kind of stand out with the black and white uh, header. So then inside, I'm going to say first, we've got the monthly mortgage payments. That's going to be the first thing that comes to mind when we got this loan. That's going to be a monthly cost we're going to have to spend. So we're going to say, all right, month, monthly mortgage payments. And now here, I'm gonna put this in the outer cell. So I could make this a little wider, but I'm gonna put this in the outer cell because I'm gonna have some sub calculations later on inside. So I'm not gonna widen it yet. I'm gonna use a payment calculation to do this. Now I usually do that with a negative instead of an equal. So I'm gonna say negative instead of equal. Technically, you should probably put the negative actually inside the formula, but this is kind of the easiest thing to do in my opinion. Uh, so it'll come out to a positive number. So I'm going to say negative and then the PMT shift uh, nine. And now we've got our little box here to calculate our payment calculation. So I'm going to pick up the rate, which is over here. Remember, you always want the information somewhere else in your data set so that you can change your data set and your whole worksheet will change for you instead of hard coding the 8% inside the formula, in which case it's a lot more difficult to change the formula. Now this is for a year. So every time we talk about a rate, we're talking about yearly rates because we don't talk about monthly rates because they would often be quite small and we want to talk about you know reasonable rates so the convention when we talk about rates is a yearly rate but the payments are monthly therefore i have to make that a monthly rate so i'm going to take that and divide it by 12. notice even though that might be a small rate here it's fine in excel to calculate it excel can calculate it exactly by using that ratio and then I'm going to say comma, that takes us to the number of periods. We're going to say this is a 25 year loan that we want to make then into monthly payments. So I'm going to pick up the 25 and then multiply it times 12 for 12 months a year. There's 25 years. 
So then I'm gonna say comma, we've got the present value, that's gonna be the actual loan amount. So that's gonna be the 250,000 and there it is. So I'm gonna say enter, that's the 1,930. Now I typically like to verify that, double check it when we calculate the amortization table, which we will do shortly. Now the other things that we have involved here when we purchase the home that we wanna make sure that we take into consideration are things like property taxes, if there's any association fees, and uh, any insurance, for example, so that we're making sure we kind of budget out the, the full amount that's gonna be in place. You also might have you know maintenance that you wanna average out and stuff. But in any case, we're gonna say this is gonna be the property taxes per month. Property taxes per month. Now, if we've estimated the property taxes per year, as we've done here, I'll just divide it by 12. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna do the full calculation here so we can see it. I'm gonna pick up that, that amount or pick up that text by using an equals. I'm gonna pull this to the inside. That's why I put a colon up top, by the way, because that means I'm gonna do a subcalculation and I'm gonna pull the subcalculation inside. These little technical things on how to build the table is, is kind of nice to know because you can kind of, it'll help you to build and read tables if you if you can use these kind of sub colons or sub subtitles and whatnot <laughs> properly. So I'm gonna say this is gonna equal the 20, 000, uh, 2,200 for a year. And then I'm gonna say the months in a year, months in a year are 12, which I can just hard code because that number is what it is. I'm gonna put an underline here by going to the home tab, font, crew, and underline, putting an, a line underneath it, known as an underline, that's what we call it. And then I'm gonna just copy this one down here. I'm gonna get rid of the colon because and I'm going to pull this to the outside. This is the sub calculation. I'm just going to divide these two out. This is going to be equal to 12,000, 1,200 or 2,200 divided by 12. I'm going to stop saying just, I keep saying just, I'm just going to do that. That's just what I'm going to do. That's just what we do. And then I'm going to select these and we're going to go up top here, home tab, alignment, and let's indent it. So I'm going to indent it. So now it's a sub calculation with a colon it's inside and then I indented it and you might double indent this last one to show that now we've pulled that back out to the outside. There's our sub calculation formatting. And then we've got the same thing for the property insurance. I'm gonna say property insurance per month calculation colon sub calculation down below because we got it for a year again. So I'm gonna equal this year. I'm gonna pull that description even over in my formula. Notice it's too long now. Now I need more space. So now I'm gonna pull this column D out a little bit, put my cursor between D and E, pull it out right there. That looks good. And the amount then per year is going to be that $600. And then I'm gonna say this equals, cause I already have it up top, the months in a year, 12. And this equals the 12. So I could use some formulas since I already did that. Save me some type in time. Home tab, font group and underline. And this, I'll just copy this down and delete the colon. Gonna control C, paste it down here. Here's the, that's what I said I was gonna do. Here's me calculating it and here's me doing it. Here's the end result, which I'm gonna pull out into the outer column. This is gonna be equal to the 600 divided by 12. I said I was gonna do it and then I, and then I did it. That's how I do things. I say, this is what I'm gonna do and then I do it. And then there it is. So there's the home tab, alignment and dent. Let's indent this one again, home tab, alignment and indent again. So then we have the association fees that's on a per month basis. So I don't need to do any special calculations. It was $300 per month. I'll just put that right into the outer column. No sub calculation necessary this time. And so that'll be the $300. Let's put an underline here. And so we're gonna say that the costs that we have, monthly housing, payments or costs let's say payment sounds like it's just the mortgage payments let's, let's keep it there because we're these are all related to the housing payments so i'm going to sum this up equals the trustee sum equals sum the trustee sum function control nine i'm going to hit the up arrow and then i'm just going to hold shift and we're just gonna we're just going to do that stop saying just stop we're just doing that that's just what we do and then I'm gonna double, let's double underline this home tab, font group and double underline it. And then I'm gonna make this blue, I'm gonna select the whole thing for some formatting purposes to format it nicely. 
let's right click on it and then we can go to this bucket here or you can go to the bucket up top if you don't have this blue you go to this this more colors down below standard and there's the blue right there why do you use why do you use that blue because that's what the accounting is fun or the excel is fun guy used and so that's what i use uh, there's no real reason i'm going to go to the home tab font group we're going to hit the drop down we're going to go down to the all borders let's put some borders around it there it is looks wonderful it looks just spectacular now let's start to let's build our amortization table uh, so that we could just practice building it. So what I want to do is I want to make the same space between here and the next thing I'm going to do. I'm not going to build anything right next to this one in the next cell. I want to make this a skinny cell then. That needs to be a skinny. So I'm going to put my cursor on this skinny so I have the same width of the skinnies. And then go to the home tab, clipboard, paintbrush it. And then I'll just paintbrush you this one. So now I got the skinnies. I'm going to hide from C to F because I don't need this information uh, here. Actually, I might need that that... 19 let's hide it for now i'm going to put my cursor on c i'm going to drag on over to f and then right click and hide as i build my amortization table so here we go amortization table so i'm going to put i'm going to do my headers first now note i'm i think i'm going to need two two rows to have some headers i'm not going to wrap the text because if i wrap the text then it makes this this cell one like wide and i don't like that so I want to, so I'm just going to use, I'm just going to basically use the two rows here. Unless I was building an actual table that I was going to insert a table. We will insert a pivot table and I'll show you kind of the problem with that. But if you were inserting the table, then you want the header all in one row, even if you have a really long header and you probably have to wrap the text. So I'm going to say that first, we're going to say this is going to be the year. These are going to be my headers and then months and then payment payments that's fine and then interest and then here's where i need the two i'm going to call it loan decrease i used to call it principal amount but i always misspelled principal and principal so now i call it loan decrease because i can unless i spell that more accurate more more times and people don't tell me you just did the wrong principal whatever you know what i was talking about that's what i tell them but then they still they still pick on me so i don't do that anymore any case, I'm going to highlight this now, and we're going to then go to the home tab. We're going to go to the font group. Let's make this our header stuff, making it black and white, black and white. And then we're going to go to the alignment and, and center it. So there we have it. Now we're going to need a number of payments. So how many payments do we need? We got 25. We got 25 times 12. We're going to need 300 payments monthly. I'm going to start at zero here and then one. And then I'm just going to select these two. That's just, we're just going to do that. That's just what we're going to do. Okay. And then I'm going to select these two. I'm going to put my cursor on the fill handle. That's the fill handle right there. Grab it, grab it, get a good grip, get a good grip, put your finger, chalk up your left finger. Cause we're pulling that thing down to 300. So don't let go. Don't let go. We're going down to 300 down here. You can see the little number thing. And we're going right there, right there. Boom. Let's center it while we're here. Home tab, uh, alignment and center. There we have it. Now we're going to do a fancy little calculation for the years because like these first 12, I'd like to know it the year by year. Otherwise I got to like divide it out down below. So this is a fancy little fancy maneuver that you might not, might not be aware of that we're going to do right here, right now. So pay attention. So we're going to say this is going to be equals to and round up round up and then shift nine and so i'm going to round up and i'm going to take this number i'm going to divide it by 12 divided by 12 but i'm going to round it up so that should be that so it's going to round up to one here because it's one twelfth right see and then comma now you got it you got to round it to the point one digit that'll tell you to round it to one that's what it means to round to one with the roundup so let's do it boom and i like to add a couple decimals to see if it does it correctly and then if i copy it down see how this is all now one because it's rounding up it's rounding up four twelfths uh rounded up to one see pretty fanciness i'm going to take this all the way down and see if it does it correctly all the way down i think it is i think it is 
super impressive. It's not just impressive, it's super impressive, I feel like. Now let's get rid of the decimals, number group, removing the decimals. That's the wrong way. I increased them and then I'm going to center it in the alignment. Okay, so there's that. Then we need the payment calc. We need, let's, let's pick up the loan balance on period zero. Let's do that first. That equals 250,000. And then I need my payment calculation, which is, which I've hid. So let's unhide it to get my payment calculation. I'm going to put my cursor on B and go, go on over to H, B to H, Bach, Bach, and then right click and unhide. And that's that. There's the amount, not the full, not this amount down here, but this amount, because we're just talking about the amortization table. I'm going to say this equals that amount. I want to be able to copy it down. So I'm going to make it absolute by selecting F4 on the keyboard or dollar sign before the F and the two. You only need a mixed reference, but an absolute reference will do and it's easier. So that's what we'll do here. Calculation for the interest is going to be equal to the prior balance. And then I'm going to multiply that times the rate at 8%. That would be for a year. So if I entered that, that'd be if it was for a year, but this is only a month. So I've got to take that whole thing and divide it by 12. I don't need brackets because it's the order of operations. So I could put brackets around this, but I don't need to because it's going to multiply before it divides. That's how it works. I, I learned that. I'm just, I'm, so then this is going to be a subtraction of 1930 minus the 1667. There's rounding involved here because we took the pennies off. Uh, be aware of. And so that's going to be the loan decrease or the principal decrease, right? And then this is the loan balance or the principal. And so, but not like a, not like a principal at a school. You know what I mean? It's like the loan principal. That's why I don't use it though. So this is the 250 minus the, minus the, the 263. So there's our new loan balance. Now we're going to do this over and over again. If I copy this down, I should be able to copy it down, but it's going to have a problem. I think if I copy this down, this we made absolute but this is the problem what did it do it it moved this cell down so anything that's outside of my table i'm going to undo i need to make absolute so this is referencing something outside of my table meaning that eight percent that out that b5 needs to be absolute so i'm going to say f4 in the keyboard this one is fine because both items are inside of the area i'm working with it's not coming from my data set no absolute necessary so now I can select these, I can drag it down, or I could just double click on the fill handle at this point, and then it populates for us. We're gonna go all the way down to the bottom, and if we get down to zero down below, then that tells us, that tells us, that's a good indication that we're, we did it correctly. Now we also know, you might also say, hey, you can build this kind of thing with an online tool, and you can, like you could check online tools to build this. Uh, so here's a loan calculator, I'm not, advertising this website or anything but this is you can find many websites 25,000 and it'll calculate this I like to use this as kind of like a double check uh, for for me because because Excel is way more flexible if you learn how to build it in Excel so notice that this does have some of these these breaks here to kind of help you out but once you get this in Excel uh, you can do a lot more with it so I would use these online calculators kind of like as a double check, but if you really want to dig down on something, I would put it in Excel because you got more you got more flexibility. And let me try to show you what I mean by that. So if I go back on over just to check this, this came out with this came out with eight percent first couple payments. The payments are the one six six. The payments, uh, the interest is the one six six four ninety one for the second one. Let's just check that. 166491 so yeah so it rounded there okay so that looks good i'm gonna make this i'm gonna make this all blue and put some borders around it let's put a border around it and make it blue so this kind of confirms uh to us that this calculation was correct that's one reason i like to do it if you just get this number which is often what the only number you will get from if you're if you're talking to like a broker or something like that then that's not really giving you a whole lot of information because you know it's nice to have that but you'd also like to know what the if you're doing a full calculation you're going to want to know what the interest is per year and the difference in the breakout between the interest and the principal as we'll see in future presentations will also be broken out uh differently as the years 
as the years pass. So you might want to see that, for example, on a year by year basis. So now let's try to summarize this table. And this is again, one of the things you can do in Excel, you can't do as easily with some of these other tools that you see online. Let's try to summarize on a year by year basis, the payments, the interest, the loan decrease and so on. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, I'm gonna copy some of these headers. I don't need the month header. I'll copy this whole thing. Well, first let's copy the skinny. I'm gonna take this skinny right there and I'm gonna go to the home tab clipboard and take that skinny and make the same size skinny on N. And then I'm gonna take these headers. We're gonna copy it, copy the headers and I'll put that on O, but I don't need the months. I just want the years. So I'm gonna take this whole column and delete it, delete that column. So there we have it. And now we want the years uh, to be one, two, three, down to the 20. So I'm gonna select those three. We'll put the cursor on the fill handle, bring it on down to 20. Did I say 20 or 25? Was it 25 years? Let's say it was 25. Is that what it was? I can't remember. Yeah, 25 years. I know what I'm talking about. Let's center this thing, home tab, alignment, center. Okay, so now I want the payments for the whole for the whole year. Now you could copy these or you could just take one payment divided by times 12 because the payments will be the same, but the interest will change from year to year. So I'd like to get a calculation that can pull this from this table. So we'll do it this way. You can also do this with a pivot table, which we'll see shortly, but I could do it this way. I could say, let's use an if it's called a sum if calculation. So what I wanna do is say, if you see that number over here on the years, on the years, not the months, I want you to sum everything in this column related to this one that has a one next to it. So, so that's gonna be our kind of matching calculation. I'm gonna use this one to tie out to this column and sum everything in this column where this one is tied out to this column. Okay, let's see if that makes sense. So I'm gonna say this is gonna be equal to the sum if calculation. So there it is, sum if. And then we've got the first one is the range. So we want to, to select the range. And so this isn't the sum range. This is the range of, of, of conditions that basically that, I've, that I need, which I'm, I want this ones in. So that's gonna be this range. Now you probably should not should just select the table here, but I'm gonna select the whole column because there's nothing underneath it. So I'm just gonna pick this up. Be careful of doing that because if you put something underneath it, which I'm not gonna do, then that could mess up your formulas, right? But I'm gonna say, there it is. So there it is. So that's a nice, easy calculation. I'm gonna say F4 on the keyboard so I can copy that one down because that range isn't going to change when I copy it down and across. So I'm gonna say co co uh, comma, and then the criteria is this one right there. I want you to search that range for this number one. And then I want you to, then I'm gonna say comma. Once you find everything with that one in it, I want you to sum not that range of ones. I want you to sum everything in the payments column. So I'm gonna select the whole column, which again, you know, be careful of selecting the whole column if, if you have something underneath it. So there is that. So there it is, I'm gonna say, okay, Let's uh, enter it and see if it does it. So it should have it should have summed these. So it looks like it did it correctly. Let's try it again with the interest here because the interest will be different from year to year. And notice I, I should be able to copy this down. And it, there it is, it's doing the same thing. And it's super impressive. I, if you're not impressed, like you should be, it should be, you should be impressed. So this is gonna, let's do it again. This is gonna be equal sum, sum, if so then i'm going to select the range which is this the range is h's h's f4 that's what that's f4 not just a four f4 to make it absolute dollar signs and then comma the criteria is going to be this number one again that number one comma and then the sum range is going to be this time the interest column column k and then uh, enter. I think that's going to do it. Notice this one did I? Yeah, so that looks good. So so then that should have summed up these. So so that looks good. If I copy it down. Boom, it should still now it should sum up these all the twos. 
So you get this nice, nice table which can tell you what the interest is. That'll help you to calculate the, you know, your tax implications and whatnot on a year by year because it's going to change from year to year. You got to be careful of that. And then we'll do the same. Let's do it again for the loan decrease in the principal. So let's going to be equals to sum if, sum it if, and then we're going to say the range is going to be this one like we did before f4 so we can copy it down comma and then the criteria is going to be this and then comma and then we're going to say the sum range this time is the loan decrease and so i'm going to say there it is now i could select f4 to copy this down the fact is it's going to be the same column because i choose the whole column so the f4s the absolute's not really doing anything so i'll keep that as it is and then i can copy that down and the loan decrease then should be this. If I sum these up, there it is. That looks good. Let's check the the next year ones. So there's the three, five, four, four. Looks good. Okay, so th this one's going to be a little bit different than the last one because I want the lowest balance. Now let's do this again. This time I'm going to delete this and I'm going to say, can, is there a way that I can fix this one to copy it to the right? Copy it to the right. See, I can't do it because it did something funny there because it because it it moved over this cell to the right and I wanted to keep it at one. So I just need to fix that by making a mixed reference. So this one right here, it's moving it to the right. That's a that's a problem. So I want it. I want it to move down, but not to the right. So that means that the 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 three needs to move but the O needs to say the same. So I'm gonna put a dollar sign before the O, but not the three, which is called a mixed reference. And then I can copy this one to the right, I think. And then I also should be able to copy it down. I could just double click, boom. And so you can now you've got a lot more information and a nice condensed table. This one, we want the ending balances as of the end of each year. So I want like this one, that's the ending balance as of the end of the year, ending balance. So that means I need a min function I need I need to I need to give me the min so I'm gonna give, I'm gonna do a min if calculation equals min uh, mens if min if there it is that's the one we want mens if take the smallest one if and then we've got it a little bit different on the on the range kind of things that, that the last one so the min range that we want is going to be this one so I'm going to select the loan balance range and then comma for the criteria uh, the criteria is going to be this item. Oh, I'm sorry. This is the criteria range. The criteria range is going to be H and then comma and then the criteria, which is the one. So there we go. And then enter and it picks out the lowest one right there. The 246.7. So I'm going to copy that down and you get this nice table summarizing this on a year by year basis getting your ending loan balance at the end of each year, and then your yearly interest calculations and payments, which are pretty, you can get the payments fairly easily, but the decrease in the loan, which you can also think of as possibly an increase in your equity, you know, as the loan balance basically, uh, you know, goes down. In other words, you can think of basically the equity being the difference between the, the value of the home and the amount that is financed if the value of the home stayed the same then the amount that you pay down on the, the loan, the decrease in the principal, is going to be an increase like in the equity or value of the home. Although you can't really realize that until you actually sell the home or refinance the home. And then, of course, if the home went up in value or the condominium, then that could you could think about that as like an increase in equity, in essence, as the value goes up. Those are the two kind of factors that are going to widen the gap between the value of the home and and the amount that's you owe on it paying down the principal portion of the loan number one and hopefully the value going up now i can also do the same table even easier in some cases uh by making a pivot table so let's just do that one real quick i'll just make a pivot table now on a pivot table i'm just going to select all the data but i can't select this first row i told you this was kind of a problem of me doing this two column thing so so i can't pick up that first column but that's okay i'm just going to pick up these as the headers and then go all the way down. I'm just going to insert a pivot table. So we'll select that whole thing. And then we're going to, I'm going to go all the way back up. I'm going to put the table inside the same area. So I'm going to say insert and let's say a pivot table, a pivot table. 
and maybe I'll put it underneath. Let's put it down here. I'm gonna put it in the existing worksheet and I'll put it, let's put it right there, right there in, in that cell in O29. So I'm just gonna put it there, boom. And then it gets a little bit tricky to do this, but once you do this a few times, it's pretty easy. I want the, I want the year. So the year, it puts over in the sums because the year's a number. It's if so, but I want to pull that over into the rows. That's the only tricky part. And then everything else will populate as you would think once you do that component. Meaning I want, I don't want the months because I just want the years. I now want the payments, the interest, the decrease and the balance, which they populate as we would expect on the right hand side, summing up the same data. It's kind of ugly in the format, but it gives us that same data nice and easy. Now the pivot table is a little bit tricky because you got to refresh it. And when you change the data on the right hand side, it could be a little bit more tricky than something like this where, where the formulas will update automatically. In other words, if I change the data on the right hand side, the pivot table, you know, you got to update it. It could be a little bit more finicky to kind of update than formulas. So that's one thing to just kind of keep in mind, but you can make a new pivot table easy if it gets, if something happens to it, if there's a problem with it by just doing this again, right? The pivot table is pretty easy, probably easier than the than the formulas once you get this kind of down. And then we just want to format these cells. So I got to do a little bit more to finish this up. One way to do that is each of these areas, I want to format the cells. So I'm going to hit the drop down, value field settings, and I'm just going to change the format by going to the number formatting and then go, I like going to currency, the brackets, and then get rid of the dollar sign and I'm gonna get rid of the decimals. So now I'm gonna say okay and okay. So now it's formatted closer to what I like to see. This one, I'm gonna do the second one. So I'm gonna hit the drop down. I'm gonna go to the value field settings and then we're gonna go to the number format. I'm gonna say this should be currency, brackets, dollar sign removed, decimals gone as well. And okay and okay. So that one looks better. Let's do the third one. Second from the bottom, value field settings, number format. And I'm gonna say that this is gonna be currency, brackets, get rid of the dollar sign, get rid of the decimals, and okay, okay. Now the last one I gotta change a little bit because I don't wanna do the sum. I wanna do the min balance. I'm gonna do the field and I want the min here, not the sum, but the min. And then the number format, and then currency, brackets, no dollar sign decibels gone okay and then okay so there we have it so now this this table should mirror the table that we had up top you can see and that's just another way that you can build it i'm gonna i'm gonna make these cells a little bit smaller so that they're not so wide i don't like them it's just a waste of space stop wasting space like that now then you can of course you can you can you can uh, wrap the text here, but be careful of wrapping the text because it causes kind of issues because this whole cell will get will get fat right? and everything else will be will look funny. So I don't like that's why I don't like doing it unless I have to, but you have to do it with the table sometimes. So that's going to be that's generally it. Now, again, so this summarized data on the right hand side often useful when you do more advanced calculations and you're trying to think about what's going to be the tax implication from year to year, not just in year one, what's going to be the inequity kind of calculations on a year to year type of basis. It's also kind of nice if you're comparing different loans to try to see a summary of the loan, you know, the year by year breakout uh, of the loans, which again is difficult to do if you use the online tools. The online tools are great, but I would use them as an estimating tool if you get more into more complex kind of things. That's the that's my general idea. So we'll keep on practicing putting together those amortization tables in future presentations.